Have you ever just went to go feed your reptiles and thought to yourself, man, crickets suck. They stink, they're expensive, and they die easy. But what if I told you there's a better alternative, and that is dubia roaches. And today, I'm gonna tell you how to breed them. But here's the kicker. I'm gonna tell you how to go from 70 to 10,000 roaches. All right, guys, my name's Ryan, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles. Let's roll the tape. So before we go into the tutorial, I need to explain the life cycle of a dubia roach so you guys can understand my method from going from 70 to 10,000 roaches. So the beginning stages of a dubia roach is the nymph, right? And then it takes 40 days for that nymph to sexually mature into an adult. And then five days later, after the female blossoms into a fine little honey buggy, she's ready to mate. And then a handsome little roach will come and pollinate that little honey. Then 60 to 70 days later after mating, the female will give live birth to 30 to 40 offsprings on average. And then she'll give birth again just like that every two months. And so that means the female can possibly lay up to 180 babies a year. And the easiest way to tell the differences between a male and a female is to look at the body. So once they're mature, the females will have a little bit more of a rounder body and they'll have little midget wings on them. And then when you look at the male, the males will have a little bit of a longer body and then they'll have a big wingspan. So it's super easy to tell the differences. And to optimize your breeding production, you're gonna need a specific sex ratio. And that's gonna be one male to every four females. Because if you have more males than you do females, you just cause a bunch of testosterone and stress. I mean like, have you ever been to a sausage party before? I have before and it sucks, dude. I mean, like, what kind of king doesn't like having multiple females crawling all over him? Hmm. So if we had a sex ratio of 14 males to 56 females and you times the females by 180, you would have over 10,000 roaches within the first year. And that's not even including the first round of babies reproducing within that year. And that is my method, how I went from 70 to 10,000. All right, now let's get to setting up your roach colony. And for your breeder bin, you're gonna to wanna to get a big dark toe. And I mean dark, we'll get to that in a little bit. But I would say a size 30 gallon is good for it. And then for my next step, I just grabbed a butcher knife, cut a hole in the top of the lid. I cut it about halfway out. And then I grabbed window mesh screen and then I hot glue gun the sides for and this will provide a ventilation. But I want a little more ventilation than that. So then I grab a drill with a half inch drill bit and then I drill out holes all along the rim of the container. And then for inside the container, you're gonna to wanna to use a bunch of egg crates for them to climb on. And when you're setting up the egg crates in here, you want your egg crates facing up. And then when you stick them on the sides of each other, you want them to actually face the opposite way because if you don't, then the egg crates will actually collapse onto each other and there will be less room for the dubia roaches to climb on. So if you do it this way, you're really optimizing space for your little swinger party in here. And this is how you want your dubia roach colony to look like on the inside. And then you're gonna want some additional heating for your dubia roaches. And I just like to use this little heat pad that I got off of Amazon. It has a little thermostat onto it that you can just change it through the knob right here. And I just pretty much leave this on max settings and it just leaves it perfectly at the temp that they need, which is between 85 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'll leave links down in the description where you can get this. And then I just like to place it on one side under the bin. I like to place it on the opposite side of where the vent lid is. And the reason why I only cut out half of the top earlier is because I wanted there to be a warm side and a cool side. So obviously where the screen vent is, that's where the cool side's gonna be. And lighting for your Dubia Roach Colony, you actually don't want really any light on them at all. It actually stresses them out. You know, they're just like a little goth kid or just a vampire. Just, you know, their life's just full of nothing but darkness and destruction. So do you guys remember when I said that you needed a dark bin? Yeah, that's the reason why you did. And then that leads us to the next category for storage. You know, the best place you could really just store them is just in the closet right there. The closet is just perfect for storing it. And when it comes to feeding your dubia roaches, I just like to feed them about twice a week. I throw in some carrots, but here's a tip though. For some reason, I don't know why, but if you give them like citrus, like orange peels and just fruits like banana and et cetera, it just makes them breed better and quicker. I'm not sure why, but just trust me, try it guys. And when it comes to water, I actually don't give my dubia roaches water whatsoever. And the reason is because like when I'm feeding them the carrots or the fruit, they actually get natural hydration from it. I actually never give any of my feeder insects water. And it actually makes it a lot easier to keep clean, less bacteria if you don't do water in there. And when it comes to maintenance for your roach colony, you should look into this little cleanup crew beetle bug that you can get online. It'll eat the dead bodies of the roaches and some of the leftover foods. And they'll actually like prevent a lot of bacteria from spreading out. So in my opinion, they're a total must. 
But I'll say this though, they're not perfect and you will have to like every once in a while clean out all the dead carcasses of the roaches that do pass. And then the roaches, they do eat through the crates a little bit throughout time. So you do need to replace those every so often. And another tip that I want to give you guys is like, just try not to like feed off your newly born nymphs. You're going to really rely on those in the long run. It does take a while to honestly start your roach colony. So if you really want to get to that 10,000 number I told you, you're really just going to have to have patience with it and maybe start a second one to feed off the little nymphs to your little reptiles. And yeah, honestly, starting a roach colony is super easy, but you just gotta have patience. And if you guys learned something new today, then do me a favor, whoop that like button for your boy. And also, I know that crickets do suck, but some of us still need them to feed our pets. But if you wanna learn how to keep your crickets alive longer, then check out my Cricket Survival 101 video right here. I'll totally have it at the end screen. All right, guys, my name's Ryan, and you're watching Mighty Morphin Reptiles.